Well, we're finally there. After an entire month of looking back at 2016, it's time to finally start talking about my own personal top 10s. And today, we're going to start with video games. Yes, I'm Aaron, Professor Thorgy, and today we're going to be covering my top 10 personal favorite video games of 2016. And before we get into it, just to remind everyone, I know it should be kind of obvious, but I just want to say these are my own personal favorite top 10s. I'm not coming in here saying these were hands down the best games of last year. These are just the games that I enjoyed the most. So I hope that you guys enjoy this list. And before we get into the actual top 10, a few honorable mentions. First honorable mention, Firewatch. I really wanted to play more of this game. The few hours I did put into it were great. I know you might be saying this is only like a five hour long game. How did you not finish it? Yeah, here's the thing. There are a few first-person games out there that I get motion sickness from. Not many of them, but there are a few, and this just happened to be one of them. So even though the two hours that I did play of it were great, I had to bow out after that because I just couldn't keep going. Next honorable mention, Pokken. As a fighting game fan, I loved how great the combat system in here was, and as a Pokemon fan, I just love looking at the big world that they created for these characters in every single one of these stages, and trying to identify every single one of the moves that were used in here, but there was a fighting game that I ended up liking even more than this one, so this is just an honorable mention. Next up, Virginia. Not good enough to make it onto the list, but I know that this game got a lot of hate, so I had to stop real quick just to say, Hey man, I liked it. I think it told the story in an interesting way that got me intrigued, so I think it deserves some recognition. Next honorable mention, Book of Demons. I love this game. I was obsessed with it, but it's still in the early access stage, so it felt weird for me to put it on the list. Maybe next year when it's completed, I'll bring it back and put it on my 10 favorite games of next year, but at the moment, it just doesn't feel right putting an early access game up here. And last honorable mention, Fire Emblem Fates. This brought everything that I loved from the last Fire Emblem game back, and the idea of having two totally different stories in two different games was a very imaginative way to approach this, and the crazy fun characters really encouraged me to play each game. And if this was a top 11, it would totally be on the list. But yeah, I just like 10 other games more. Now to get into the actual top 10. But before I begin, if you'll excuse me, I can't start this top 10 off without playing the craziest intro music from any game this year. Number 10, King of Fighters 14. I'm putting King of Fighters on this list because this was the first installment in this long franchise that I ever played, and yet I still fell in love with it almost instantly. It had everything that I want in a fighting game. A large roster of crazy characters, a combat system that was accessible for beginners but could be expanded for veterans, an arcade mode. Yeah, I'm still not letting that one go, Street Fighter V. I had lots of fun with this game, and it made me want to go back and play some of the earlier games in the franchise. Also, one of the few complaints that I did have with the game is that it didn't really look all that great. So you know what they did? They updated it. They made it look better. They didn't have to. They had already sold enough copies, but they did it anyway. And I believe in applauding a developer who decides to keep improving their game after it comes out. Number nine. I beg you, return home, claim your birthright, and deliver our family from the ravenous clutching shadows of the darkest dungeon. Darkest Dungeon. So as I have said in previous videos, I haven't played much of the Dark Souls games because, well, they're hard, and I'm a wuss, and I refuse to get good. But with Darkest Dungeons, that was my Dark Souls. That was my insanely hard game that just punished me and pushed me to my limits and had me holding my breath with every attack because it could be my last, but I kept coming back because that difficulty made every victory so rewarding. Until I realized that my characters had all gone insane from the stress and were infected with diseases, so I would have to spend all my money and several weeks of time curing them. Yeah, did I say that this game was punishing? 
But if you ever want to combine Dark Souls with gorgeous 2D animation and a D&D campaign run by a really disturbing kid, this is the game for you. Now, next up at number 8 is a game that I've played a lot of this year on Twitch for you guys. It's a game that made me love multiplayer games, a game that is highly addictive and has built up a strong fan base. That's right, say it with me, Overcooked. Yes, Overcooked. It's just a game where you have to prepare food for customers at your restaurant and that's it. But, uh, did I mention that the orders start coming faster as the game goes along? Every level has some weird catch to it, and you have to communicate with your partners to get the orders out, which gets insane later on down the line? Seriously, this is one of the most fun multiplayer experiences I've had all year. Do yourself a favor and just go on YouTube and watch literally any Let's Play of people playing this game. It is hilariously insane. Oh, so bad. At this no, point, you should so just bad. restart. The you put a mushroom I, in the f onion soup? <laughs> <laughs> what are you making? Mushroom onion soup? No. I, this, this is the worst anything has ever, 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 ever. This, ever. Just, this is it. Put this the is mushroom in the fire. We, I don't think we've put put Stop <laughs> setting <laughs> on fire. Number seven, Watch Dogs 2. I didn't play the first Watch Dogs because, well, I just heard too many mixed to poor reviews. Plus, I'll be honest with you, I'm just not big on open world experiences. They're just not my type of game. But this one got such good word of mouth that I decided to check it out and I'm glad that I did because wow is this game fun. I love sneaking into every facility and slowly hacking my way to victory and opening up new abilities, which is really impressive for me to say because not only do I really not like open world games, I don't really like stealth games either. There is no reason I should like this game and yet I totally did. And a lot of that comes from the characters. These are some of my favorite characters from any game this year. They're fun, they're goofy, they feel like real people, which considering that one of them is wearing a Daft Punk helmet is really impressive to say. Speaking of that kid, when I first saw Wrench, I thought, this kid is going to be so annoying. Two hours later after playing this game, I freaking love Wrench. All these characters are so darn good. Speaking of games I never used to play, at number six, Doom. Now I mentioned this in your favorite games poll when you guys voted this game into the top 10, that I never played the original Doom because as I mentioned earlier, some first person shooters just make me sick. So this was really my first chance to get into this franchise and I feel like after all this time, I finally get it. This fast paced action, the insane levels of just unrelenting destruction, the way this game can make you go from I'm unstoppable to I'm about to die to I'm unstoppable again. In a matter of seconds, all of that creates such an intense gameplay experience. Take all that and throw in a world that was huge with tons of opportunities to explore for secrets and this game is the definition of going above and beyond what was needed. Number five, Final Fantasy XV. Okay, I just have to go ahead and say this. I have a lot of problems with this game. Problems with the story, the way it's presented to you, that freaking cup of noodles product placement. In fact, I've tried to record a post-game reaction to it about all my problems several times, and yet at the end of the day, I still have to put it on my top 10 and I have to put this high because despite my problems, what this game does right is so darn good. This world is amazing. I love that they realized that they screwed up by taking side quests out of Final Fantasy 13, so they decide, you know what? Just give them tons of side quests. All the side quests. Put more side quests on top of other side quests and just let them run out there into the world and start those quests as soon as the game begins. We created this giant world, just go out and explore. When I got into the actual story part of the game and it all got linear, yeah, my enthusiasm did drop. But up until that point when I could just run around the world, combo enemies with my boy band Broforce and explore this huge map, I couldn't stop playing this game. So kudos to you Final Fantasy XV, we had our problems, but end of the day, you're still one of the only games that I ever completed 100% because darn it, you were just too fun. Number 4, Owlboy. I love Shovel Knight, but it always bummed me out that I missed out on it when it first came around. I didn't get into the game until after Shovel Knight craze had already started dying down. 
so it felt good that Owlboy kind of gave me a chance to relive that hype. This is another great pixel animated platformer with likable characters that reminded you of how much you missed older series while at the same time creating something brand new. Plus, the presentation of this game is on point. The world looks stunning, the character designs are great, and the music is perfect in every scene. And the character of Owlboy himself is one of the best characters of the year. He's called a failure and ridiculed by everyone, and this game really does put you in his shoes. I've never seen a game where you had to fail the tutorial level just so you can feel how he does. That is some amazing game design. Number three, Pokemon Sun and Moon. If you guys have watched this channel long enough, then you know that I love Pokemon. And when this new installment of the Pokemon franchise came out, I was a bit nervous. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love the new Pokemon, the new Alolan forms, these new characters, this step up in the graphics, but a Pokemon game without gyms? Who ever heard of such a thing? But what they did with this game was what the Pokemon franchise needed. It gave us something new that still captured what we loved about the game in the first place. And they finally gave us a story that felt like it was the focus. Like it was what we were really here for. Not some story that was just there to break up your quest to beat the Elite Four and get all the gym badges. But instead a story that you actually wanted to progress. And I said the characters were good, but the villain was great. Lusamine is one of my favorite villains from any game this year. I was actually going to make a best villains and heroes list this month, but I kind of ran out of time, and she was easily going to be in the top three. That's something I never thought I'd ever say about a Pokemon game. Number two, Uncharted 4 A Thief's End. I've been a big fan of the Uncharted games, not just because of how good they look or how fun the gameplay is, but mostly because of the characters. I've loved following the adventures of Nate and Sully and Elena, so when this game said it was going to be the final installment, I got nervous because how often do you see the final chapter in a character's story and you leave feeling satisfied? But this game nailed it. It is stunning to me that this game could come in here and introduce a brother we never even knew Nate had, and yet we still felt the connection. It retold Nate's origin story, but it told it in a way that still felt like we were getting new important information about how all this began, and it led up to a conclusion that I will not spoil, but I thought it was perfect. I don't mean it was good, I mean it was perfect. Perfect. I truly believe this was the best way to send these characters off. It actually nearly brought me to tears as I watched those ending credits roll. This is hands down the best ending to a series I've ever played. And at number one, Overwatch. With how much I talk about this game, how much I stream it on Twitch, is this really a surprise to you guys? Well, it should be because as I said, not really a fan of first person games, not really a fan of multiplayer games, and yet I am obsessed with this game. When I first started playing it, I thought, it's good, but is it really worth $60? Cut to 150 hours later of game time, no I am not exaggerating that, and me still coming back trying to capture points and escort payloads, and yeah, it was easily worth the money. This is a game that is so fun to learn and even more fun to master. I love that every character feels like they're overpowered, but then when you realize everyone is OP, no one is. I love the rich history of these characters, and sure, none of that is really in the game other than just dialogue references, but when you can read it all for free in their comics, or watch it for free in their videos, I'm kind of okay with that. I love these character designs and just how different and memorable they all are. Heck, I just love these characters, period. No other game has had such a wide range of dynamic and fun heroes, and that's the other thing, this is just a game about heroes. Yes, you're all just trying to compete over spots on a map, but the enthusiasm in this series is infectious. It lifts you up, and after how rough a year 2016 was, we kind of need a game like that. The world needs us now, more than ever. Are you with me? That's it for my top 10 games, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you guys for all your support this month. And if you want to see the rest of my top 10, remember I've got my 10 favorite movies, my 10 worst movies of 2016, and my top 100 comics of 2016 coming up. 
Make sure that you check out all those videos by hitting that subscribe button and also share these around the web. It's the best way to help promote this channel. And remember, if you want to watch me play Overwatch or any of these other games, then you can always join me every weekend on Twitch. It's twitch.tv slash Professor Thorgy. Thank you guys for joining us today and make sure that you come back next time.